Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at the Turkish G3 bayonet, made to fit the G3A7 and G3A7A1 rifles in Turkish surface. Now these bayonets were made by MKEK, which is an abbreviation for something in Turkish, but roughly translates to the Mechanical and Chemical Industry Corporation. And um, well, the Turks had G3 rifles in service for quite some time. So initially they got the G3 A4 rifles uh, purchased from Germany in 1972. And it wasn't too long until they started manufacturing their own G3s under contract. So in 1977, uh, MKEK started manufacturing the uh, G3 A7 as well as the bayonet we have before us. Uh, it appears they were made from 1977 and it looks like they're still making them now because if you jump on their website they still have them listed as a product and uh, it appears about 1.4 million were made as of about seven or eight years ago so possibly even more than that now. Now in uh, Turkish service they replaced the uh, M1 Garand and the FAL. Well the Turks have always had an absolute mess of uh, weapons in service so Traditionally, they've had you know a hundred different <laughs> rifles and bayonets and homemade bits and pieces. It's just an absolute mess. However, after the Second World War, they kind of standardised a little bit with M1 Garands and FALs, and then after those in uh, 1972 and 1977 respectively, they really standardised again with the G3, which sort of became their single standard rifle. However, after 37 years of service, they were recently, well, they started to be recently replaced by their new rifle, the uh, MKE MPT. And um, that's a pretty modern rifle and it has a bayonet very similar to like an M9 style. Um, so these are still in service, but they've gradually been replaced slowly. Now I jump into the construction of this blade here because this is actually quite interesting. So for comparison, I've got a commercial G3 bayonet here. Um, commercial ones have the plum red blade, most of them don't, and usually they've got a shorter blade stopping at about there. But you can sort of see the difference, mainly in the handle and the, the cross guard, but very, very different design. I'll put that to the side. So we'll start with the blade. The blade is actually very, very wide and very thick and heavy. Uh, it's a very, very uh, solid and uh, thick and durable and a lot of the G3 bayonets have a little bit of give in them. This is absolutely solid. This is very, very thick. Uh, finishes in a spear point. Um, neither side is sharpened, although this one hasn't been issued, so I'm not sure if that's intentional or how it came out of the factory. If they're supposed to be sharpened by the soldier or not, I don't know. The finish, I haven't been able to decide upon. It's not a blue, maybe a paint, but it's very, very thick and gritty. I don't think it's Cerakote, but it's um, it's almost got a greasy feel to it, but it's very, very thick. And uh, what makes this blade very interesting are the fullers. The fullers are actually on opposite sides of the blade. So while on one side it's here, turn it over, now it's down here. And it also appears the fullers have been cut, not swaged into the blade, which is um, quite odd. You don't see that terribly often. So very, very solid blade. For comparison, again, I'll put the G3 blade next to it and you can see the difference in how wide they are. Maybe. It, it's got a couple of extra mil to it. And uh, moving down to the cross guard, cross guard is very Turkish in that it's very, very solid and very, very wide again. Uh, 22 millimeter uh, muzzle ring for standard muzzle devices. And um, we'll just compare it to, again, the German G3. You'll see it's a lot cruder. Manufacturing is nowhere near the same level of complexity. Then moving down to the handle, we've got a plastic handle with 20 little ridges. This one is a little bit damaged. It's uh, a little bit melted. Um, not a bad handle really. Then moving down to the pommel, we have this absolutely giant press button for attaching the bayonet to the rifle. 
And it should be noted that uh, G3 bayonets fit to the top of the barrel, not underneath. But I'm just going to keep pulling this out for comparison. Look at the size difference in buttons there. Like that, that is a huge ass button. That is massive. Other than that, pommel tapers down to a little rod which inserts into the rifle and we've got our little ramped catch here which when you depress the button disappears. So that's the bayonet. Now the scabbard itself is very very heavy. It's um, stamped steel. Two pieces that have uh, had the edges folded together and that's how they've attached it. And this is actually a copy of like the uh, the World War One German Ersatz bayonets that um, Turkey received a lot of. So very very simple and cheap and easy to manufacture. My biggest complaint is this is heavier than pretty much any other scabbard. This is the heaviest scabbard I've ever come across for the size of it. And you can really see like the um, the stampings and the folds around the edge. Now this one is missing the frog stud, which is a bummer. I've got no markings or anything up around the mouth. Actually, I haven't paid much attention. Is there even a... So there is a spring in there holding it in and that'd be retained by um, that screw there. I hadn't paid much attention to it before. Now, in terms of markings, there are none. The only time you'll find markings on these is you'll have a serial number on the cross guard if issued. Now this one does not have a serial number, so I imagine that means it was a either unissued or commercial because they do sell uh, their rifles and bayonets from their website. Um, I assume they probably supply other countries as well, but I don't know who. But uh, yeah, very, very sturdy and solid bayonet. It kind of reminds me of like the, the Set Me C with that little bolo blade. Just how like solid and heavy it is. Like it feels like a chopper, even though you couldn't chop anything with this. Um, I don't know that I would uh, take this to a bayonet fight. Not that I want to be in a bayonet fight to begin with, but um, it's yeah, very very heavy, bit unwieldy, uh, unsharpened. Obviously, it's not going to make a good knife. But once you sharpen it up, I imagine it probably hold an edge pretty well. Just feeling the steel and. The tip has a razor sharp point on it. Like that is really nasty. That'll definitely do some damage. So you know what, I'll, I'll give it points. It's on the end of a um, heavy G3, which is not the lightest rifle in the world, being a 7.62 NATO rifle or battle rifle. So it's definitely gonna do its job. Probably a bit heavier than it needs to be, but it's a very typically Turkish blade. It's very solid, very rugged, and a bit crude. There's a whole lot of different G3 bayonets out there if you're familiar with them, like the Germans made them, they're you know, made for Norway, made for Pakistan and Iran, and you know, there's so many different variations. You could even claim the Set Me Spanish bayonets are variations of the G3 as well. You know, your Set Me C and your Set Me L. Anyway, guys, that's really all I have on these. Um, I was a bit surprised that there's no manufacturer's marks or anything on them, but then again, None of the other Turkish stuff has it, so why should these? If I made any mistakes or uh, you have any other information about these, please feel free to comment below. There's not a terrible lot of info out there, but very cool bayonet. Thanks for watching.